right, so hey guys, welcome. This is Kendra with Kendra for Him Ministries with Pastor Joey, and we are here with you tonight at the King's Table. And um, hi, Pastor Joey, it's good to see hey, you. Hey, Kendra, good to see you too. Hey, everybody. Yeah, hey, everybody. So we're so glad you joined us. And tonight, um, we kind of were texting back and forth today, Joey and I were, we were talking about what the Lord has on our heart. And he was talking about releasing a message about worship, right? Yeah. <laughs> And so, um, which worship is near and dear to us because Joey and I have had the privilege to lead worship together for years. And so we understand worship as a form of lifestyle um, from a musician's point of view, from an artist's point of view, but from a pastor's point of view. But so anyway, so we thought tonight we would dive in and uh, maybe we'll um, start with prayer and then Joey's got a word. And then if you guys have questions and answers, you're more than welcome to put them into the chat and we'll feed those over to Joey or myself. We'll answer those as we uh, kind of walk through this process. And so we're just here for you guys um, to partner with you. And to we, our goal and our heart is that you would sit at the table with us and we would feed you with wisdom, insight, and knowledge from the Lord. And Joey's the man to do it because he's got great favor in this area. <laughs> so um, let me open in prayer and then we're just going to pass the baton. Is that cool, Joey? Sounds good. All right. So, Father God, we just thank you that we get to come and just be in your presence tonight. Lord, I thank you that you have um, released just some wisdom and insight and revelation of your word to Joey. And so we just pray your hand is upon him as he releases this word and his anointing. Your anointing is on him. And God, we thank you that your word never goes out void. And so um, we're just here to learn from you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Speak to me, wise one. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Lord's really had me in Genesis getting into Abraham's life and even <clears throat> pre Abraham, the Abram part that, uh, most people tend to skip over cause we like new things. Right. And so it's like, I don't read the Abram part. I want to, I want to get the, to the ham part, you know? And so, um, and, but God's had me in this place where I've been reading and, and there's things that have been catching me off guard that um, I've read before, but just not gotten. Have you done that before where you're reading scripture and you've maybe read it uh, a dozen times, but because it's living, right? Second Timothy 3.16 says every word is God breathed. So it's a living word. Uh, you might read a passage you've read a dozen times and all of a sudden something just kind of pops yeah. and uh, that you've never seen before. And so that's how it's been for me with this uh in genesis chapter 12 abram has been in uh haram with his father right his uh his dad set off on this journey and brought abraham or abram with him and sarai and she's not sarah yet and you can't jump ahead there right and so they're on this journey and they're supposed to be going to canaan and they get to haram and evidently it's nice enough that dad sets up shop they stay there and in fact, they never get to their destination because dad's like, no, it's good here. And um, <clears throat> they only make it about halfway uh, to their destination. They stop and then his dad ends up dying there, right? And then you get to the point where God then says to Abraham, hey, you're going to leave all of your uh, family and you're going to pick up and you're going to move. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you to a place. And, and there's a lot of I wills. I'm just going to read real quick out of um, starting at verse 1 in chapter 12 in Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. And all the families on the earth will be blessed through you. There's a whole lot of will happening there. And I will and you will. And, and where the Lord has really been speaking to me is um, a little bit of correction is I am guilty. I think like many people are of tending to worship into the, the has done moments of life. Mm -hmm. God, this is what you have done for me. Or um, you're telling somebody else, uh, God has done this for me. And so I'm celebrating and there's nothing wrong with that to a certain extent because we overcome by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony. Um, mm -hmm. But there's nothing innately wrong with that. But there can be a tendency of saying, what have you done for me lately? And we don't worship until we see the next thing that's happened. Oh. And um, I've really been convicted by that. Right. And, and so, um, and sometimes the Lord will use random things to kind of break you out of that. And sometimes it's, um, it's pain and it's not always pain that, um, 
he's chosen for you. And sometimes it's correction that he brings, or sometimes it's just choices you make and it brings cross pain. The other day I was watching, um, this Jerry Seinfeld show on, on, um, Netflix. It was called like comedians in cars with uh, getting coffee or something. Yeah. And, uh, and so he's interviewing this one guy, Trevor Noah. And, um, he had a, an amazing statement. I, I'm going to read it so I don't get it wrong because they were talking about learning stuff. And, um, and Jerry says, I always say that pain is knowledge rushing in to fill the gap. When you stub your toe on the foot of the bed, that was a gap in knowledge. <laughs> and the pain is a lot of information really quick. Yeah. And, and he said that, man, I was just laughing. I'm like, man, isn't that the truth that pain is a lot of information that comes really quick. And, um, and so I've kind of gone through some, some difficult moments where I'm like, Lord, what do I need to learn here? And, and what the Lord's been showing me is, man, Joy, I need you to, to be a worshiper who will worship me in the, in the, in the will do moments, yeah. not just in the have done. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and there's a maturity that happens there because listen, if we only wait till the, the have done moments, we will miss operating in our purpose day after day after day, because innate baseline purpose for us all is worshipers. Mm -hmm. Um, and so if we wait till the have done moments, we'll miss out living uh, in our daily purpose. And, and, and in fact, it'll feel very hopeless mm -hmm. because it, when you're not operating or activated in your purpose, after a while you realize, man, I just feel like I'm faking life. Yeah. Uh, I'm faking what I'm, who I am or what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, but when we learn to worship in the will do moments, so all that to say, what caught me off guard with Abraham is God says, I will do this. I will do this. I will do this. And he moves out and he gets to Canaan and God says, I will give you this land. And he's saying this right after we know that it says that the Canaanites were there. Mm -hmm. So the land's already inhabited. And God says, I, I will give this to you. And Abraham or Abram rather, what does he do? He sets up an altar and he worships. Yeah. And then from that moment, he begins traveling and it says, then he sets up camp in between Bethel and Ai. And then he sets up an altar there and he worships. And, um, and I start to see a kind of a, a habit in Abram's life of a lot of altars and a lot of worshiping. <laughs> and I appreciate Abram because he gets a lot of stuff wrong, but he gets a lot of stuff right. And it makes me feel like there's hope for me. And so, um, but the thing that catches me about when he worships between the Bethel and Ai, when he sets that up, nothing happened there. Like there's not, um, there's no major word from God. Like the sky doesn't part and the sun shine down. There's not a touch by an angel moment. And there's none of this amazing stuff. It just says he just sets up shop. They just stop. And so he just worships. And uh, I was reading that and um, man, you know what? It, it, it came across to my mind is the land had not been given to him yet, even though he was there and the promise hadn't been fulfilled yet. And um, I, I think maturity for us as believers comes in the place where we worship when we're just one day closer, when we're just one day closer to the promise fulfilled and when we're just one day closer, man, there is, there's a life that happens in between Bethel and AI. There's a life that happens in that place when we'll just stop and worship and say, God, you're worthy when I'm one day closer. Right. Uh, not just once it has happened, right. but, um, you know, and so what I really felt like encouragement for tonight was, was two things. The, the, the first one is finding places in your life, even legitimate, literal, physical places that can be altars for you that you can say, when I pass by this in my everyday life, whether there's a, a tree outside your front door or uh, something you pass on your way to work, something where you attach a promise of God, a scripture to that location. Yeah. And as you pass it, you get that in your heart and you worship God in the, in the will do moments. Yes. Those altars are reminders because even Abram, what's amazing with between Bethel and AI is there's a famine that happens in Canaan and he gets pushed out of, he and Sarah get pushed out of Canaan. And they have to go to Egypt. Mm -hmm. And um, man, it's hard when you feel like you're leaving the dream. Right. Yeah. And, um, he goes and then he has this crazy time where he's like, Hey, Sarah, tell everybody you're my sister. So they don't kill me. And cause you're really hot. And you know, and there's like, you know, the, the, the part that gives me hope because Abraham does dumb stuff. Yes. Right. And, uh, <laughs> but, but on their journey back to Canaan, they end up right there in Bethel and AI again. 
and nothing happens, but they worship again at that yeah. altar. And so I think having legitimate places in our lives set up where you can say, yeah, as I'm driving by that place, if it's the old factory on the way to work, whatever it is, the location itself is not as significant as what it reminds you of. Mm -hmm. And so um, having things and reminders, because I think what's so important, and this is why it's so important to me, I feel like there's a lot of people that are going to be watching this, that you feel like you're losing strength. And, and what I mean by that is this, um, my brother a few years ago took a missions trip to Ghana, Africa. And he went with, it was a really cool sort of medical missions. Um, uh, and they saw all kinds of good stuff. And he was just going to be the videographer and the photographer and had never been on a mission trip before. And so Ghana is right on the coast of Africa, right? And on one of their free days, they said, hey, let's go uh, down to the beach. Let's hang out. And so, um, but Ghana is not like, you know, when you go to the beach around here, we always go to Myrtle Beach down in South Carolina. Uh, shout out to any South Carolinians listening right now. So we always go down there. And there's, yeah, and there's lifeguards, right? There's lifeguards. You look, and there's these big chairs, and it's not like that in Ghana. And so anyways, my brother, not worried about that, gets out in the water and uh, ends up getting caught in an undertow and starts sweeping, uh, sweeping him out to sea. And uh, he's swimming, and he's swimming, and he's getting worn out. And um, and I remember him telling me the story, like the, the realization, like, man, this is how it's going to happen. You know, those thoughts of like, wow, this is, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to die in Africa. You know, I'm going to, um, I'm going to drown out here. Um, his body was just, the strength was leaving his body. And um, the harder he tried, the, the less effect it had. He just kept getting pushed down. So he's like a hundred yards offshore. Now there's another guy from his team that has jumped in the water to try to rescue him and he's caught in the current too. Mm -hmm. And that guy's starting to struggle to keep above water. Yeah. And um, so my brother's like having this moment where he's thinking, okay, this is how it's going to go down. And he said, uh, he said, Joey, I just remember clearly all of a sudden I felt like the, the voice of the Lord say, stand up. And he said, in my mind, I felt like if I stood, I would sink because um, I knew that I didn't have enough strength if I went under to come back up. Um, and so I just kept swimming. But then I felt like I audibly heard again, stand up. And at that point, I didn't have any energy left. So I didn't have anything left to lose. So I went to stand up. <clears throat> and miraculously, I ended up being on this thin sandbar. What? It was 100 yards off from shore, right? Oh, and uh, he stands up and he takes a breath. And his friend is now drowning. And he's in worse shape than Jason. And Jason begins shouting out to him, stand up. His name's Peter. Peter, you got to stand up. And, um, and finally, you know, the, it clicks in for Peter the same way it did for Jason. I don't have anything else to lose. And he goes to put his feet down, and he's on the same sandbar. What? And um, deep waters to the left and to the right, but they happen to be on a sandbar. Wow. Walk their way back into shore. And I was getting ready for tonight, and the Lord reminded me of that story. And um, I feel like what the Lord's saying to some people that are watching is there's some of you are watching tonight, and you're drowning in a place where you can stand. Mm -hmm. And um, you're just exhausted, and rightfully so. The season is rightfully difficult and, and, uh, and, and hard. Um, but I feel like the Lord's saying the promises, the promises he's given you, the will do's, um, is a place where you can stand. And it's a place where you can breathe. And it's a place where you can rest and um, doesn't mean there's, you know, not going to be inhabitants in the land or, and that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. And even next week, I'd like to follow up with a little bit more of what, what Abram does next. But for this moment, for tonight, I feel like the two things are this one, uh, take hope in knowing you're in a place where you can stand that God's word will never return void. Uh, and that's a place to worship. And the second thing is this, as a practical step, find locations, markers in your daily life, physical markers that you can say, here's a promise of God for me, whether it's a prophetic word spoken over you, a life verse, or you just start searching tonight. I don't care if you Google promises of scripture and you find things and you begin just saying, okay, this is promises of scripture and, um, and stand on them. But as you do that, I believe that hope is going to be released. Yes. And it's critical uh, that you take these action steps because you can say, I want to, I want to receive hope. But, um, but I feel like what Lord's saying tonight is you got to stand. 
Yes. And so there's an action step there on your behalf. Yeah. Yeah. God hasn't gone anywhere, but it's just an action step there. Yes. Joey, that's so good, man. Thank you. Uh, you know, I was taking notes, so I kept looking down because <laughs> I wanted to write everything down as you were saying it. Because, you know, there's so many seasons I know even myself that I've come through. And I remember there was a time where I came through um, when we lost Josh. And there was so much, like, I remember saying that I felt like I got sucker punched. And, um, and then something just clicked in me. And I'm like, I am going to go and stand on the promises of God. Because it's the only thing that I can count on right now that I know that God says he's never, you know, he's not changing. He doesn't sway his words. He doesn't change what he says. And so that we know that we know that we can stand on the promises of God. And so much so that I remember thinking, I'm going to write a book on the promises of God. Like this is like, it was just that revelation. Like you talked about earlier, like you read something and you're like, oh my gosh, like, like it just resonated with me. And then of course I went to the bookstore and saw all the books on the promises of God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah, there's nothing new under the sun, I forgot, but it was such a season for me that all I had to hang on to, and remember, Joey, I don't remember this now, but you said to me during that season, you said, um, don't you think you should sit down, sister, and not worship, and I said, not only no, but hell no, that I was yeah, yeah. worship through that, you remember that? Yeah. And that I was going to worship through this time in my life. And because there's this intimacy that happens and it brings us, draws us back to the father. And you're so right in saying it takes an action. And I love how you, um, you know, the tangible takeaway for tonight is to find that place that, or to um, whether, wherever it is, but that every time you see it or you pass by it, that you give, you know, you worship God. Like, and, and physically, and I'm going to even just tailor what you said, like release an, a, an outward sound or raise your hands or celebrate him, but to worship him because it is, it, that was so good. You said it's easy to work, to worship in the, um, the has done, like, God, you have done this and you've done this and that's gift and praise. That's amazing. Sure. Um, but I love how you said it's in the, I will do it's, it's coming in faith and trust that and knowing that God is who he says he is. And when he says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Right. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and it doesn't make you a hypocrite to mm -hmm. worship. Um, there's a lot of people, especially in the South where I am in Virginia. So it depends on where you are in the South, if you consider it South, but, um, <laughs> but there's a lot of people who say, man, I, I hate the hypocrisy of church. Somebody that's going there and they're acting one way during the week and then they're a different way at church. And sometimes we translate that over to, well, if I don't feel like I should be worshiping or if I don't feel like worshiping and I do it, then that makes me a hypocrite. That, it can be further from truth. What it makes you is mature. Absolutely. There, there's no wisdom in our emotions. That's why God's given us a will. And so if you don't feel like doing this, man, there's no greater time to mature in your faith with the Lord and your walk with the Lord than to say, no, I choose to with my will. Yes. And uh, that's not sexy. It doesn't sound like, you know, we want to feel the ooze and the tinglies and the, you know, the Holy Spirit warmth all over it. And those moments are going to happen. They're there. But, um, yes. you know, the, we'll never be prepared for Isaac if we don't worship the Lord in the will do moments. Okay. We'll, never be, we'll never be ready for it. And we'll never be able to rebound from the Ishmael moments mm -hmm. if we don't worship because there's maturing that happens. There's, you know, I love Abram. There's just failure and success and failure and success, but he's not a hypocrite. He's no. just trying to figure it out. Yeah. And that's what we are. We're just trying to figure it out. And so uh, I want to break any kind of lie, depending on where you are geographically or, or uh, spiritually, any kind of legalism thing saying it, well, if you don't feel it, then you can't really mean it. Uh, no, when you choose to say it, um, when you speak truth over your emotions, uh, that is maturity. And um, at some point, your emotions will catch up with your will. Mm -hmm. But it, when you do it the other way around, the enemy will just push the buttons of your emotions as long as he wants to, as long as you will follow that, because it will mean that ultimately you won't worship. But when you say, no, with my will, I choose to. Uh, it's a game changer. You know, it really is because then, because then your worship is never situational. Yep. Yep. It's never based upon situation. Amen. Amen. Um, and so it's critical. It's a critical step to take. And yes. so having that thing, you know, and you can put promises, you can have a, you can have a tree that's promises over your kids, over your finances, over your marriage, over mm -hmm. your city. It does whatever you're praying like 
man, there's people I know. And, and there's, you can also take scripture uh, that you're trying to memorize and say, I'm, I'm putting that right there. And it's just kind of a mind hack for you. Every time you drive by that, it just kind of refreshes in your mind. Yep. And, um, but uh, it's, it's a, a phenomenal step to take that can bring a lot of health and a lot of hope. So. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I think, you know, I've always in all the teams that I've ever trained in the ministry wellhouse, um, I've always said, whenever you feel like, like when you have that pushback of, I don't want to, whenever you feel like you don't want to, that's when you need to do, because that's the enemy holding you back. And he's actually robbing you of a promise or, or uh, he's robbing you of a blessing is what he's doing. And so it's so good that you say that you, in your maturity of your faith, you step in because that's really what it is. It's to say, no, um, I'm going to choose to worship God. I'm going to choose to worship him through this storm. I'm going to choose to believe that he will um, bring me through this storm and that I am an overcomer. And, um, and it, I mean, over and over, I hear people all the time. In fact, we have a, a sweet woman who's coming to our Monday night gatherings. And she said, I keep coming because Kendra, you're going to teach me how to worship. And, you know, she's just coming hungry for that, that ability just to press in. And sometimes it's a learned, you know, you have to keep doing it. Yeah. yeah. It, sometimes it's hard. There is pushback. There's times where I remember wrestling worship. I'm like, I don't feel like it today. I'm in a bad place. Yeah. But I, but I would say, but I'm going to choose to because there's victory in the worship. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And you know, I, I, I believe that um, there's a, uh, there's a freedom that happens over time that you don't necessarily feel all at once. Mm -hmm. There are beautiful yeah. moments. I agree. Where you feel, uh, breakthrough like all at once. But when you operate like this, there's like season by season, day by day, there, there's a, there's a breaking free <clears throat> and even a countenance change in who you are, because what you're doing is you're operating with an identity yes. because the enemy's work is to try to always get you to operate. And you're not really a son. You're not really a daughter mm -hmm. because if you were, we always mistake favor <clears throat> as being things going our way. Right. Uh, a lot of times it, favor is very much uh, intimacy in the storm. Yes. Um, but we mistake and we say, well, I don't have the favor of the Lord. And so the enemy puts the lie. Well, it's because you're not really his son. He loves everybody else. And, um, you know, and then and that inserts the worry, like, man, well then what do I need to do? Or I'll never be good enough for, mm -hmm. and I'll never forget. I uh, listened to T.D. Jakes one time. He said, uh, worry at its root is idolatry. Yep. Does it worships the word of the enemy or the words of the Lord? Amen. It's so true. Uh, you know, man, that hit me. I was like, Phew, you know, because um, I don't want to be walking in idolatry. And, and I know there's some seasons where I've worried over finances, over, over family stuff, over <clears throat> kids. And, um, but man, uh, to operate in saying, yeah, I choose, I choose to stand on your word. Yeah. Uh, and I will, I will not fail. If there's days I, I don't do great at it, <clears throat> it's not a pass or fail. Seven times, the proverb says, seven times the righteous fall, but seven times they get back up. Right. So it's not a pass or fail. It's if you have a rough day, who cares? Right. You just get back up and you keep going. Yep. And I think in the midst of just giving worship and praise, do you know there's a scientific study where you can either think positive or negative, but you can't think both at the same time? Yeah. Um, and Madison told me about that in her senior year. And so, um, it's, so it's an interesting thing. So when you have a negative thought, mm -hmm. to turn it from the negative into the praise, or to, I trust you, God, I believe in you, I choose to do this, that it completely changes the mindset. And like you even said, as you worship and choose that position, your whole countenance changes. And there's so many, so many days that I get up and I'm just getting ready to run out the door and I feel a little bit chaotic and I literally will go and sit at the piano and just worship. And it might even be five minutes, it might be 10 minutes, but I, it's just like, I just got to get myself you know, ready for the day and settled in my spirit and my eyes back on the Lord to say, okay, this is your day. Really it is. Everything you have for me is your, is yours for me to steward. And so I'm going to worship you in spirit and body and mind. And then I'm going to worship you as I do everything with the spirit of excellence in my day. So, so good word, good word where you guys, I'm sure you guys have tons of questions and comments. And, um, so if we don't ever get to you while we're on these meetings, um, we will respond to you via email. And so, um, our heart again is just to come alongside of you and live this journey of called life.
And um, this is one of the ways we do it is through the King's Table. As Joey and I gather each week, uh, we're just going to come and meet with you guys. And then there's um, other resources and equipping that we're doing. Um, you can meet us at candrawforhim.com. We also have our Warriors Wall, which is our prayer ministry. So you can click on the Warrior Wall and um, submit your prayer. We have a whole prayer ministry that is uh, there waiting and um, that's exciting. We met with everybody last night, right, Joey? And it was just Super fun. exciting. Yeah, fun to see everybody and where they're at. So um, we just, we love you guys. And um, Joey, I love you. Thank you for your powerful message. You just, I'm right back at you. yeah, you just always deliver it so well. And we appreciate you and honor you and your giftings. And um, I look forward to your teaching next week, which will be in addition to this. Yeah. And you guys will get you notes on all of this and um, some tangible actions. And then um, we also want to equip you with an online journal where you're going to be able just to journal or if you have your own journal, um, we're huge advocates of journaling and putting down the tangible things. But then um, we're going to teach you some of that in the in these teachings in the upcoming. And then in a couple weeks, um, I'm going to speak and teach to worship. And Joey and I both will co-teach that. But just like, what is worship? Like, that's a great question, even as we're talking about it. A lot of people who are here probably been like, what is worship? What are you talking about? Yeah. And so we're going to equip you in that, that you would be able to continue to walk this out strong. So, right? Yes, indeed. Amen, amen. Well, Joey, do you want to pray us out, bro? Yeah, so Lord, I just thank you for encouragement right now for <clears throat> the ones that are watching and they can completely identify with their arms feeling uh, exhausted, their legs aching, that they can't, they can't feel like they can stay above water anymore. Those that were watching and they completely identify, uh, Holy Spirit, I thank you that, that you would fill uh, the room that they are in right now, that your peace would fall like a blanket, that you would uh, meet them like a cool drink of water on a hot day. Lord, I thank you right now. Holy Spirit, just come and refresh and refill them. Lord, I thank you that you're the glory and the lifter of their head and the weapon formed against them will prosper. God, I thank you that your face shine upon them, that you bless them in the coming and the going. They're lying down, they're rising up, that you be their front, their rear guard. Lord, they'd have the mind of Christ and those of God. Lord, just be blessing and favor, Lord. I thank you as they find these uh, altars in life, that they find these locations that they can say, I'm standing on these promises and these reminders. Lord, I thank you that they would be <clears throat> renewed, their minds would be renewed with your word. And they just walk into all the fullness of promise that you have for them in Jesus name. Mm. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Joey. Bless you. Love you. Love you too. Have a great evening. Thanks you too. Bye you guys. And we look forward to seeing you next week. God bless.